so we'll start by talking about ATP. Um, this is ATP. Here, I'll write it on here. ATP. Adenosine triphosphate. Tri is three, has three phosphate groups on there. This is a high energy molecule. It's unstable. Why is it unstable? Because these phosphate groups don't like each other. Um, they're large and they're charged. They push against each other. And um, left to its own devices, ATP will revert to its low energy form, ADP, adenosine diphosphate that just has these two phosphates on there. Most cellular processes that require energy, um, that is, enzymes that need energy to do their jobs, proteins that do things like um, pushing ions through membranes the way, the direction that the ions don't want to go, all that sort of thing, those things that require energy, typically the way that they get energy is they'll reach out and grab an ATP. Um, they'll grab the ATP and allow that third phosphate to pop off. When that phosphate pops off, that energy is also released. The energy that's also released can be used by that protein to do its energy requiring job. So in general, ATP being allowed to become a DP, so this high energy thing becoming this low energy thing releases energy. So this is an exergonic process. And this exergonic reaction can be used to drive any kind of endergonic reaction. So the cellular processes, the, the, the things that the cell is doing, they're always using ATP, and when you use the ATP, you end up with ADP. So there has to be some process that takes those ADPs and turns them back into ATPs. That, of course, is another endergonic reaction, and that is what cellular respiration does. So respiration, that's what this does. So let's do the overview. And we'll start with aerobic respiration, just because aerobic respiration is, um, well, it's more interesting. It takes longer to talk about. Aerobic respiration, we start with our high energy molecule is going to be glucose. Um, glucose is going to go in. And glucose is high energy molecule because it has all these, uh, these energy-rich carbon-carbon bonds in them. Um, and through this set of reactions, this sort of large set of complicated reactions, we're going to end up with these carbon-carbon bonds being broken and the carbons being released as low energy carbon dioxide molecules. The energy that's released will be used to drive this reaction of taking a DP and an inorganic phosphate and turning and, and sort of shoving that phosphate onto the ADP, phosphorylating the ADP so that we have ATP. And since it's aerobic, um, along the way, we're going to end up consuming some oxygen. We're going to end up uh, producing some water. Um, but for now, uh, if you want to just get a good picture of the overall function of aerobic respiration, it's this business, taking a carbohydrate that's rich in carbon-carbon bonds and breaking those bonds, releasing the carbons as carbon dioxides, and when these bonds are broken, the energy that's released is going to be used to drive this endergonic reaction. So this is the big picture. You know, this is the this is sort of the function. This is the this is what you should start by understanding. Um, this is basically an unbalanced chemical equation because it describes what goes into a process, what comes out of the process, and you should understand this um, before you get into the next level. That's the big picture. We're going to jump into the medium-sized picture next, but understand the big picture first.